Vieques, nicknamed Isla Nena or Girl Island. It is a place of beauty and conflict. An island of only 33,000 acres, Vieques has become a pivotal place for U.S. military training. Its beautiful beaches and rolling hills have also become battlegrounds for protest against the Navy presence. For over 60 years, the United States Navy has used Vieques as a training facility. This plane represents just one of many weapons used to bomb the island of Vieques with live ammunition. The beauty of Vieques attracts many tourists to this island. As a fellow Puerto Rican, I went there in search of a better understanding of the complex relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico. The last few years in Vieques have been filled with political gatherings and protests against the Navy. Songs about peace have been common through the streets of this island. Don Rafael Buris Moris Morales has been protesting against the Navy for most of his life. He sat down to talk to me during my visit to Vieques. Bueno, aquí nosotros, yo le diría que aquí la, nosotros protestamos contra la Marina, porque la Marina nunca ha ayudado a este pueblo para na en nada. Y de que está la Marina aquí no se vive tranquilo con el tiroteo y y las bombas y, 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 y al principio era peor porque eran los marinos corriendo por toda esta isla como si esta isla hubiera sido una isla baldía que lo que hubieran habido aquí eran hubieran sido salvajes sí pues ellos no respetaban aquí mujeres no respetaban joven viejo chiquito grande no respetaban a nadie ellos abusaban de todo el mundo Y, y, y entonces pues, pues esa fue una de las causas que más hubo que, que empezar a protestar contra ellos por el abuso que tenían con esta isla y en cuanto a ayuda ellos aquí no han ayudado nada pero cuando el temporal Hugo la marina aquí no dio ayuda ninguna aquí lo único que vino como, como ejército a, dar, a brindar la ayuda fue la Guardia Nacional de Puerto Rico de los puertorriqueños La Marina no nos prestó ninguna clase de ayuda. Y así, pues, si no tenemos nada que, que agradecerle, pues, ¿para qué los queremos aquí? Vieque, an island of fishing and agriculture of past sugar-sweetened economia, of navies and bombings, of lines drawn in the arena, island of children jugando, of military gates and police, of verde, azul y rojo, of red, white and blue, of protest and justice and injustice, of beatings, arrests and fights, of beaches and mountains and arboles. Vieque, island of struggle and conflict and dreams. Well, the conflict first began when the U.S. Navy came to Vieques. Uh, the Navy came in the 1940s as a um, 
as a very gross violation of the right of the people of Vieques to live in peace, expropriated in the 1940s, beginning in the 1941, through a series of congressionally approved um, laws without any participation on the part of the people of Vieques or the people of Puerto Rico, the U.S. government approved the Navy takeover of uh, 26,000 of Vieques, 33,000 acres, so that by the end of the 1940s, the Navy was in control of the entire eastern third, the entire western third. The people of Vieques, thousands of people moved off land they had lived on for generations. Uh, so the conflict began when the Navy f moved into Vieques and started throwing people off their lands, uh, and obviously has intensified at different moments uh, like this moment we live in now uh, as a result of the killing by a Navy bombing in, you know, on April 19th, 1999 of a civilian Viaquense security guard, David Sanes. The death of David Sanes sparked a massive protest that stopped naval training in Vieques for one year. Since then, there have been periodic training and bombings. These have been met with large protest and civil disobedience. It has resulted in thousands of arrests and incarcerations. But the suffering began back in the 1930s and 40s with the expropriation of lands by military officials. Um, we've heard from many people about the expropriations themselves when the Navy came in and ordered people out of the lands they had been living on. Some have described it as a holocaust. Some have described it as something similar to what happens when a hurricane hits, knocks down your house and, you know, life is turned upside down, you have to move someplace else. The process of taking the land, well, these were lands that were terratenientes, almost todo, and companies. The companies that had land, well, through the government and the marina, hicieron los trámites para las compañías, para despropiar las compañías y entonces los, los pobres que tenían dos o tres cuerditas de terreno pues venían los, los grandes de la marina con un alcahuete de aquí de vieja que tenían ahí mismo eh, que era Manolo Portela y, y venían y le decían nosotros necesitamos esta propiedad y, y usted tiene que, ven, eh, tiene que irse de aquí en 24 horas y, esto, y venían y ellos mismos le tasaban Y si, y si decían que la propiedad valía 50 pesos, eso le daban. A, a la, como a ellos les gustara, como a lo mejor les convenía a ellos para pa despropiarlo y, y para tasar los terrenos. Y después, pues, si el dueño de, de la propiedad no, no estaba de acuerdo a abandonar la propiedad, yo le dije, tiene 24 horas para irse. Le vamos a dejarle el dinero. En el, se lo, como aquí no había banco, porque había el correo, en el correo, un giro en el correo. Lo coge cuando lo quiera, si lo quiere, si no, no coja nada, pero se tiene que ir. El otro día lo, si no se iba, el otro día le metía máquina a la casa y para afuera con todo. Porque ellos no respetan, ellos le metían la bulldoza a la máquina, a la, a la casa. Así. The, there were there was bombing throughout um, the year, off and on. Um, where I'm at in in the um, island, the, it would sound sort of like thunder. You know, you'd hear boom, 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 boom. You know, and it'd be off in a distance. And you know, every now and then there would be you know a, a large you know kind of uh, sensation that you know, oh, what was that? You know. But I think. People knew that when they came, you know, they knew that this island had this kind of activity going on. And they would call up and they say, now, are they going to be bombing when we're there? Or are they not? And they would try to schedule, you know, their visits around not being there. I mean, I've been on the beach where, you know, troops would come up and pass people on the beach, you know, sunning themselves you know, sort of in some exercise. And people just never really thought it was, it was sort of like being I don't know, uh, in an odd place. I don't know, it just, I can't really describe it. It's sort of, you don't, it's surreal. You don't really expect to see 
um, you're on vacation, you don't really expect to see, you know, people in uniform and, and, and army trucks coming down the road, you know, it's, or, or you're on the beach and you don't really expect to pass guys in a platoon truck or something. Pues mira, este, las prácticas militares comienzan temprano. Ellos empiezan a las 8, terminan a las 11, a las 12 de la noche. Eso es constante y continuo. O sea, ese es el bombardeo constante, el ruido constante, los aviones sobrevolando las escuelas y la población civil en violación de todas las leyes eh, que rigen las prácticas militares. Este, eh, cuando hay eh, sobrevuelan los aviones y los helicópteros, tú tienes que paralizar las clases porque no escuchas el bombardeo estruendoso, el ruido estruendoso tiene que paralizar, eh, los niños también paran y, 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 y señalan eh, eh, una bomba o dos bombas, cuentan las bombas que tiran, así que el, la, el, el, el que el niño se quede eh, concentrado en lo que está aprendiendo no es posible porque el niño empieza a perder concentración con todo el ruido exterior que producen las maniobras. Eh, los vehículos militares comienzan a transitar las calles a grandes velocidades, haciendo grandes ruidos a cualquier hora y todo eso produce una distracción para los niños. Eh, en ocasiones los niños más pequeños se asustan y dentro de su, su realidad eh, comienzan entonces a manifestar dentro de sus libretas eh, 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 aviones de guerra, combates de guerra, y todo es una militarización inconsciente del niño. Well, I guess the most uh, you know, visible the facts you can see if you fly over the bombing area, or if you get out to the bombing area, and this is something that uh, the, the overwhelming majority of the people of Vegas had never seen before this past year because this, this area was not, you know, was prohibited uh, except for very few people from Vegas who worked as security guards out in the bombing area. The great majority of the people of Vegas had no idea of the intense destruction that has gone out on the eastern end. As a result of the movement that sprung up immediately after the killing of David Sanes on April 19th of 1999, the setting up of a dozen or so, so uh, protest camps inside the bombing area, thousands of people from Vieques, from Puerto Rico, from the United States, from other countries, moved in and went into the bombing area and walked around. So we got to see constantly over this past year Lagoons turned into lunar landscapes. Beautiful beaches littered with shrapnel and bombs. Crystal blue waters and coral reefs um, completely uh, wounded by uh, all types of military garbage. Bombs sticking in the coral reefs and, and fragments of boats and trucks and ships and other military garbage in the waters. Uh, an incredible juxtaposition of the beauty and the beast. The effects of the Navy are also clear in the island's economy. Teacher and protester Nilda Medina explains. Mira, yo creo que Vieques está estancado eh, económicamente, socialmente, en términos educativos. O sea, Vieques no tiene, por ejemplo, hospitales que funcionen realmente. Eh, Vieques eh, no tiene eh, alternativas para productos frescos. Aquí la vida es bien cara, bien cara, bien cara. Eh, la vivienda aquí es carísima. Para un sitio donde hay un 50% de desempleo, la vivienda está aquí sobre 300 dólares mensuales. Eh, el, empleo, el, el desempleo es altísimo. Aquí eh, la agencia principal de, de empleo es el gobierno municipal. La Marina dice que da empleo, pero solamente tiene ahí contratado menos de 100 personas. Así que realmente la cuestión económica aquí es una cuestión grave. La cuestión de salud es una cuestión grave. La cuestión de necesidades básicas es una cuestión grave. O sea que bien que se ha estancado, se ha paralizado en, en los años 40. O sea, nosotros decimos que nosotros no, no ha terminado la Segunda Guerra Mundial aquí, 
porque aquí se sigue practicando la guerra, mientras en otros sitios se habla de paz, en Vieques sigue constantemente practicándose la guerra. Así que nosotros estamos en una guerra constante, así que la Segunda Guerra Mundial para nosotros no ha terminado, pero la economía se ha estancado de igualmente en los años 40. The lack of development on the island of Vieques has had a very interesting effect. The lands not used for military training by the Navy have maintained their natural beauty and attract many tourists every year. Bed and breakfast owner Penny Miller explains what tourists find when they visit the island. I think people at times would say, you know, oh, I wish the Navy weren't bombing or why are they here? They had questions. Other people really sort of just accepted it. The beaches and the um, the landscape and what was available to people as far as nature was concerned was so tremendously beautiful. I think that some people actually thought that, you know, if this land was not restricted, uh, that, you know, they would be visiting a place like Loquillo Beach, which in its own right is, has its beauty, but it's, it's, um, a, it's like being in a downtown shopping mall. So, you know, there was like a trade-off. People were willing to accept the presence of the military because they also had these incredibly beautiful undeveloped areas that they could look out over. Like you could look out over mountains and mountains and mountains of just green and, and, and ocean and beach and without you know, fast food places, highways, you know, that kind of thing. Our business has suffered dramatically. I mean, there's no comparison. It's a struggle to make it. If you talk to any business owner on the island, who's dependent on the tourism business, um, you, I'm, I'm sure they're going to tell you that business is off. Right now we've had to struggle and, and try to bring groups on the island, really concentrate on ecotourism. A actually a lot of uh, business we've been able to, um, you know, um, serve business communities, people who are coming to protest, they've been here, that's been good. Um, they have less money to spend for sure, so you know the level at which you're going to recoup um, any kind of you know revenue is going to be at a much lower level. But you know it, the whole thing is is that Vieques is always like a roller coaster. It's always up and down. I mean, you know, you if you're going to be in business in Vieques, you're not going to be making a lot of money. You're here because you love the island, the lifestyle is what you want. And I see stuff happening in the future, but this is sort of a, a, a dull, quiet, uh, sort of tucking in your stomach and buckling your belt and you know, getting through the next couple of years, because I, I don't see it improving dramatically in the next couple of years. The, the historic demands that have been put forth by the Committee for the Rescue and Development of Vieques, and we believe that these are the historic demands of the people of Vieques uh, for the demilitarization, decontamination, devolution or return of all lands uh, to make possible a sustainable community controlled development of a future free Vieques. Um, we cannot trust Bush. We cannot trust the politicians because history doesn't allow this. Um, we must continue to keep the Vieques issue alive. The civil disobedience actions have been and continue to be the most important element, the most important strategy in the struggle here to stop the bombing and to bring the issue to the attention of the world. We will continue to f push here at the local level in the streets, up against the Navy fence, at the Navy gate, in the in Navy controlled waters, in the bombing range, in the courts, in the jails. Uh, through peaceful nonviolent civil disobedience, through the continued organization of the community, um, to make sure that the pressure is, is maintained, to make sure that Vieques continues to be a, an issue for voters 
and we you know want to make sure that Bush continuously understands that he must make the right decisions on the Vieques issue if he wants the, the Hispanic vote in the United States. In my time in Vieques, I came to understand that political power does not necessarily lie with the people of this island. As a territory of the United States, major decisions rest upon the U.S. government, and hence on the shoulders of American voters. Esa, esa, yo, yo diría, yo no, no, no sé ni cómo explicarle ya que yo de, de, de yo, yo he aconsejado muy poco a nadie ni nada, pero yo no desearía que para ninguna, nadie, ningún habitante de ningún otro país le suceda lo mismo que a nosotros. Que vaya a ir la nación americana, cualquier nación que sea, a meterse a su propia, a sus tierras, a, a, coger, a destruirle lo, lo poquito que han obtenido con el esfuerzo de, de, su propia, de su propia vida. Porque eso no ha sucedido a nosotros. Nos ha sucedido a casi todos los viequenses. La Marina aquí lo que ha hecho es destruir este pueblo. I went to Vieques hoping to document a struggle for peace. I came back understanding what all Viequenses and Puerto Ricans must understand. Our fate and our power lies in the hands of others. But we can sometimes shake and move those hands through unity. <laughs> 